This is the ninth question of logical reasoning drill set number three over at lawhub.lsac.org. As always, we've got the highlight tool ready to go, and we're going to read the question stem first to mark our task. The flawed pattern of reasoning in which one of the following is most similar to the flawed pattern of reasoning in the argument above? So we've got a parallel flaw task, which you probably recognize as one of the more time-consuming tasks that you'll encounter on the entire logical reasoning section. But it does tell us in this case that we're looking at a flawed argument on the left-hand side. So we're going to read that argument in full. We're going to highlight what the conclusion is. And then we're going to try to mentally predict what a flaw might be based on our understanding of the argument as a whole. So we read from the top. The custodian maintains that if she had stolen the formula and sold it to our company's competitors, she would have collected a fortune and quit her job. However, she is still working at our company for minimum wage. Thus, she must not have stolen the formula. Now, you may be recognizing some conditional logic here, but to expedite our evaluation, especially on a parallel structure task such as this, we don't want to engage with conditional logic. It's just going to take too long. Instead, try to just more holistically see if you can recognize a flaw. And we're going to change our highlight tool so we can highlight whatever part might be wrong if we can identify it. So, we see at the beginning, the custodian says that if she had stolen the formula and sold it to the company's competitors, she would have collected a fortune and quit her job. But we learn that the, the custodian is still working for minimum wage. So clearly, she did not collect a fortune and quit per the structure of the argument. But we should be able to recognize that we can't just say that she must not have stolen the formula then, because there were two prerequisites. She had to steal the formula and sell it to the company's competitors. So really, we're looking at a flaw in that we just said that if these two things had been accomplished, she wouldn't be doing what she's doing now, meaning working for minimum wage. But we only know that she didn't do one of those things. So we can't say that she didn't steal the formula because she might have stolen the formula and not satisfied the second condition of selling it to the company's competitors. So now we're going to go back to our yellow and highlight reasons to either eliminate an answer choice as we go through A through D, or we're going to highlight and say, actually, this is the same kind of flaw because there were two conditions and only one was known to not have been met. So we can't make the logical leap that's made in the argument on the left. Thank you for watching this explanation video of an official LSAT practice question from lawhub.lsac.org. If you're enjoying the tips that it contains, please consider liking the video, and you can also subscribe to our channel to be alerted when new video explanations are released by MyGuru. Also, check out the description below, because within it you'll find links to full sets of video explanations for official LSAT prep tests from lawhub.lsac.org as well. But for now, let's get back to this video. So starting with choice A, the pet owner maintains that if the raccoon had rabies and bit his dog, then the dog would have fallen ill. Okay, so raccoon has rabies, bites dog, dog would fall ill. But the dog didn't fall ill after being bitten by the raccoon. So it was bitten. Therefore, the raccoon doesn't have rabies. Well, that's a logical argument because it said that if the raccoon had both rabies and bit the dog, the dog falls ill. The dog doesn't fall ill after getting bitten by a raccoon. So there had to be one thing that wasn't met, and that would be the raccoon doesn't have rabies. So A is a valid argument, so we can eliminate it almost immediately for that reason. Next, choice B. The presiding election official states that if she had accepted a bribe from the incumbent's party and falsified voting results, the incumbent would have won the election. Okay. The incumbent was soundly defeated. Okay, so the incumbent didn't win the election. However, so the election official must not have accepted a bribe from the incumbent's party. Well, there were two conditions here in choice B. There was accepted a bribe from the incumbent's party and falsified voting results. The incumbent would have, would have won, but the incumbent didn't win. So we can't make a statement about either because they might have only satisfied one of the two parts that was necessary in the condition at the outset. So B is looking pretty good right now, and I'm going to proactively select it. And at this point, we're going to scroll down to the remaining answer choices just once so that we don't keep going up and down because that can be dis orienting in the interface. So we're going to go back to yellow, looking for reasons to eliminate. Continuing with choice C, the airplane manufacturer claims that if there were a design flaw in its newest passenger jet, the flaw would have been discovered during testing. Okay. 
no problems were discovered during testing. There must be no design flaws in the manufacturer's airplanes. Well, this is, again, a valid argument, so we should be able to eliminate C as not having a flaw almost immediately. Then choice D, the promoter of the Snow Dog Jamboree said that it would be successful if there were good weather and ample parking. Even though the weather was good, the Jamboree did not do well, thus there must not have been ample parking. Well, again, there were two conditions. One was met, the other wasn't. And the thing didn't happen, so this is valid as an argument once more, so we can eliminate D as not being flawed. And then choice E, the government official argues that she was not the one who leaked the sensitive information to the press because she had no motive for doing so. And whoever leaked the information would have had the motive and the opportunity to do so. Well, she didn't have a motive, and the person who leaked it would have, so this, again, is a valid argument. And you can see how by just focusing on validity as opposed to conditionality, you can get to the right answer of choice B here, hopefully in a little less time than you would have had you diagrammed everything fully.